Hey everyone and welcome back to another industry report. So, Halo Infinite has been delayed until 2021 with an unspecified date. Interestingly enough, that's also something that recently happened to Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2. Now, it has been said that the Halo delay is for a multiple, uh, sort of multitude of different factors, including COVID-related delays and things like that, but I'm pretty sure we all know the primary reason given recent news. So, that's what we're going to be covering today, as well as what this means for the next console generation because certainly in terms of competitiveness this is a very very large blow unless Lockhart can end up being some sort of value play that ends up being successful for Microsoft but somehow I am a little bit skeptical of course today's show is brought to you by our Patreon where we do the daily briefing every single day so if you want dropped into your inbox the day's news for gaming then check that out thank you to all of our supporters and with that said let's Let's jump into the news. Alright, so Infinite has been delayed with multiple factors being cited. Apparently, it is not sustainable for the team's well-being, nor is it right for the game's success for Halo Infinite to ship in 2020. Now, obviously with this, a major factor is how poorly the game was received with its recent footage. It really was dragged over the coals for looking so underwhelming, and I think what really was interesting there is it wasn't just uninformed opinions or anything like that. You had the likes of Digital Foundry giving pro proper specialist breakdowns of why people were actually feeling the way they were feeling about it. And that ended up being a lightning rod for the community, which I think was very positive in that it actually let people say, this doesn't look good, and here's why, and here are the things we would like to see be changed. So hopefully those complaints will have given 343 a very clear roadmap, at least for how they can fix up the visual issues, because certainly there was a humongous mismatch of expectations to many people's eyes, while while Halo Reach was technically worse and resolution and all of those things, it might have looked like a more cohesive product. And certainly for many people, they felt it looked at best like a very current generation game. And whether that is true or not, Ultimately, that's not the perception that is going to lead to that game being a system seller. Now, Halo is the largest franchise that Xbox have got under their belt, so that's major. And also, you've got to remember, it's not just about Xbox, the console you can buy. It is about Xbox Game Pass, a major part of Microsoft's overall business strategy that also is on PC. So if the game is disappointing, it will blow back onto PC as well, because they very much are taking a multiple different types of hardware, but one overarching platform approach to their business. Now, not having this at launch is going to be pretty massive. Uh, it's the sort of thing where I'm going to say it is a, a mistake in terms of their prior planning. Obviously, I think it is the correct move for them to make now, but it will, I believe, kind of destroy or significantly damage their holiday prospects and that really is the worst thing that you would want to uh, that you would want to have happen for your console but that said it probably is better than writing everything on you know the game that everyone's going to be talking about the big new release for your big tentpole franchise and for that to be a really big letdown so i will say that it's actually an incredibly confident move from xbox that they have decided to do this they are basically sending out their shiny new console to die with no blockbuster title to like ship units um, and after 343 statement, Xbox posted a blog titled Xbox Series X launches this November with thousands of games spanning four generations. And it literally says, we have plenty to keep you busy until Chief arrives. And I suppose while a good third party lineup, smart delivery and Game Pass are very solid reasons to play on Xbox, none of those scream, go out and buy the new, probably $500 box, especially in 2020 of all years. In fact, I think if anything, it just says, get Game Pass on your PC and keep on going as per usual, Halo will be out eventually. I think that's how many core gamers are going to respond uh, to this. It's certainly how I'm going to respond. Now what that of course means is they have conceded the holiday period to Sony pretty much entirely, although the PS5 launch lineup is... Uh I mean, it's more or less just, like, Spider-Man. Now, of course, like, they could have Tsushima PS5. They could have, like, Last of Us Part Two PS5 and have those be really juiced up and look incredible. But in terms of the real new shiny stuff, it's Spider-Man Miles Morales. But, of course, that is but one battle in the war. 
And it's the battle that we're all thinking about, because it's the one that's looming, but we do need to take a more long-term view of things. I think the industry in general will be better if long-term views of things were taken. It is 2020, it's by all accounts not the best year we've had, and even with the exceptional successes that gaming has seen, game stocks have done very well, game companies have brought in fantastic, uh, you know, stuff in terms of their financials, but as GameIndustry.biz puts it, it's a, you know, it's sugar rush financials. Now, the point there is that, well, by November time, a lot more of the economic slump may have actually ended up hitting people, and that people at that stage will, because there's no got, not going to be as much stimulus or, say, the, um, the jobs retention scheme in the UK, those things are going to peter out, and we will be left with an economy that is undoubtedly going to be damaged in some ways. So will people be rushing to pick up a new console for a few hundred dollars? I mean, I don't really think so, and that's maybe especially when so many people ended up probably getting Switches and getting quite a lot of video games at this stage of lockdown. I just feel like there is going to be a pinch. Now, that said, I do think that this is going to snap back a little bit faster than most, uh, than like most recessions, but I suppose there is the underpinning the underpinning part of this, if you look at how some of the economy has went and like debt ratios and stuff, where, yeah, in terms of that, like long term debt cycle, there certainly are fundamental issues, uh, so who knows? This could actually last quite a bit as a recession, but at least I think the sort of snap-down recession, uh, I mean, there are numbers that, like, we're already experiencing sort of growth again, which, in terms of the technicals, would take you out of a recession, but, uh, you know, it's just how long will that economic impact that people actually feel at ground level, how long will that keep on going? And from that, we know a lot of jobs have been lost, so it could be pretty darn rough. Probably not the ideal environment to be launching your new game console in, but that said, as I said earlier, it is a long game, and we should think long-term in terms of all of these things go. Now, to go to some reactions, as far as things, I think, go for the core community, this is a pretty awful look. It is essentially saying Microsoft did not plan, their game was not where it should have been, and their plan is falling to pieces. Whereas, if you look at Sony, it seems a lot more clean, a lot more as planned. People will be saying that Sony have won the console war already, even though it hasn't even started yet. Like, technically speaking, the sales have not started. So, I think that's going to be an immediate PR loss in some ways for Microsoft, even though people will respect them for the decision that they made, which undoubtedly is the correct one, and one that is pretty ballsy, pretty confident. Now, timing is important for all of these things, but a lot of, you know, console sales and platform attachment, I mean, they do come from the incredible experiences that those flagship games can bring, and Halo Infinite was supposed to be one of those. And, you know, even beyond, like, the features or the value that a platform provides, it's those games that deeply resonate with somebody and give them a, like, emotional experience that they really feel. That is what drives the continued engagement. And that is a big loss right up for Xbox, but it's not necessarily in that regard a long-term loss, because Xbox have experienced some of this before. I mean, number one, if you know anything about Halo 2's development cycle, a bit ouch, but uh, if you think about Halo 3, right? The Xbox 360 didn't get Halo 3 for almost two years, and uh, console sales actually overtook the Nintendo Wii in the month that Halo 3 launched, and if you know what the Wii sales were like, that's pretty insane. Now, the 360's launch lineup was pretty solid, so it's not really the same situation here, but we do know that Halo can bring a strong boost. I would say there's a fundamental difference there, where I think there was just a bit more confidence in Bungie's ability, and also Halo was big in the zeitgeist, as being one of, like, the first, like, mass market online games, uh, I think, with the shooters, like, that was sort of super commonly played, like, loads of people's experience was playing Halo 2 in their college dorm or, you know, in, like, high school with their friends, so Halo 3 sort of launched into that environment, whereas right now with Halo, well, with Halo 6, Halo Infinite, it's coming off the back of Halo 5 being pretty good in multiplayer, but not setting the world on fire, having a rough story, and there not being a massive amount of confidence in 343 at least with a section anyway of the core Halo fan base. So that is going to be rough. And in response to this stuff being rough, Microsoft's entire plan is basically just to offer great value. 
And that's the sort of thing where it's not sexy, is it? I mean, people are already calling this the worst Xbox launch ever. And based on how Microsoft look in terms of marketing, I think people are broadly right there. It is not great, even though in many ways it's going to be fantastic value. Because certainly if you have whatever your budget is, you're probably going to be able to get more bangs for, bang for your buck on Team Microsoft with Game Pass than you are with Sony. It's just that sort of thing where Microsoft are lacking something to rally the community behind. They're lacking that emotional experience. The reason I say that is because you can logically think Microsoft Game Pass or Xbox Game Pass, what a great value. But are you going to rush out to the shops, you know, to go to your, twi your midnight launch event for that? No, you're not. And those are the sorts of experiences that make the super fans for consoles. So yeah, basically, it's a big blow to the launch performance. Absolutely will be. They will have to recover in the long term. I think that Halo Infinite, if it does turn out to be the big blockbuster that they need and they actually do spend time then this could work out and be the right move i'd say this was the obvious move it was perhaps the only move they could have made and until then we'll just have to see if value can actually save the day for microsoft of course though there is a question left Will Halo Infinite be good? Now, they've got no timeline for when it's actually going to launch, and that probably means they've got no idea when it's going to be ready, because a delay of a few months is probably not going to let them overhaul everything, right? Or, you know, all the things that they would want to in an ideal world. Now, one of the key things uh, that uh, I think will be marketed is the ray tracing patch. That's something they did mention, so I imagine that'll be ready for the game's launch. And if they are running that with full ray tracing, then the lightning issues that caused, if you've seen the Digital Foundry video, the lightning issues that caused so much of just why that game looked very old and very weird, then that should be a bit more solved. But of course, the thing really is it all comes down to 343. Now, I'm sure they'll be relieved to hear that leadership is taking into account how unsustainable crunching for a release this year will be. I'm sure because, you know, as grim as it feels to be distrustful of a studio lead's statement uh, talking about delaying the game because of crunch, we have heard stories before that delays are, uh, you know, not intended to relieve pressure on developers. Uh, back in January of this year, of course, we all saw the Jason Schreier article that was responding to the Cyberpunk 2077 delay by posting an article called Video Game Delays Cause More Crunch. And that's basically just saying that based on the people he talked to at a number of studios, delays almost never mitigated crunch. It was never we have this amount of work to do, we're going to, instead of doing it in this amount of time, we're going to do it in this amount of time so that we can have a regular workday. It was usually, it is impossible for us to hit this date if we crunch 100%, therefore we need to crunch 100% till this date. That's generally how it seems to have seems to actually play out in the industry. And I mean, I think that's something that's pretty obvious because they wouldn't delay the game if they thought it was good enough to launch and that they could get it into that state. They obviously know they can't. And we all know that they would just grind their staff to dust to hit the big holiday launch. That's just something that's happened time and time again in the industry, right? And reading in between the lines, I think we absolutely know it's because the game needs more time in the oven. Now, it is sad that studios keep on being forced into this trap of being worked so hard that, uh, you know, the quality of their work falls, which then leads to delays where they just have to work harder to make up for it. Ultimately, it all comes from bad planning at sort of earlier stages of a project, bad pre-production, things like that. So hopefully Jason, like, investigates 343, as we're pretty sure he is doing, and finds that it's better than some of us suspect. But I wouldn't put money in that, especially because just as the news broke, Jason did tweet an old Reset Era post that he made in February where, uh, talking about if Halo Infinite would actually hit in 2020, he said, games that lose their creative directors midway through development aren't exactly going through the most stable productions. It's not a surprise, is it? That's something that, I mean, come on, everywhere we see that, we, you, you know what's up, right? And Halo Infinite did have that situation of creative director uh, sort of going halfway through the project, and I would say, generically speaking, yeah, that's always a bad sign, I would say. I think it's rarely because everything was going spiffing. <laughs> so that's probably what happened to Halo Infinite. That is a little bit rough. And uh, man, what I would give to know what that creative director knows or what Jason Schreier knows. That said, we might find out, because at the end of the day, Jason Schreier is a journalist. What is the incentive system of journalists? It is indeed to produce some journalism, and uh, when Jason does that, he usually does it by, uh, you know, actually going, talking to sources, doing some groundwork, and uh, giving us some form of interesting article to read, so hopefully that does happen. So, to wrap this up, there is a little bit more, um, sort, of, sort of in terms of the small info, um, just in case you missed it, there was recently leaked Xbox controller packaging that confirms that the Xbox Series S is planned for launch. Now, we believe that 
that's Project Lockhart, which is a lower cost uh, console, sort of in the like the Xbox Scarlet lineup. So I think that would be replacing the current Xboxes, and you'd be able to purchase the Xbox Series S for cheaper, or the Xbox Series X, which would be more powerful, but of course more expensive. Now we had expected to hear more about that in August, but according to Shinobi602, who clearly does know the right people, that event has actually been pushed back to September. So things are clearly not going ideally over there. But, uh, you know, while a month or two feels super crucial now, there is opportunity to take wins in the future. Xbox's recent post revealed that the console is coming in November, but the shipments of controllers uh, do not sell or display, or say do not sell or display before November 6th. So that's, I mean, you know, maybe it's what, mid-November or, well, I, I mean, it could be November 6th is when they're actually, if it says sell or display, then I guess November 6th is going to be like our, our earliest date for that console coming out, which certainly is interesting, and I'll say this much, like, if you like Xbox Game Pass, and uh, you just, you're, you're in that Xbox family of games, and that's where you are, yeah, upgrading to an Xbox Series X, like, it's going to be a beefy boy, as far as, a, as far as a console goes, and it's going to immediately give you a pretty good experience. Ultimately, there's a bunch of sexy stuff here that's not panning out that well. Halo Infinite should be sexy, it's not that sexy, it's being delayed, we're all a bit sad about that, right? But, if you're just playing your average game, and if playing that average game on more beefy hardware means 4K 60, or, you know, 1440p checkerboarded to 60, or maybe 120, as Phil Spencer has said, with a lower latency setup, then, yeah, is that going to be the most newsworthy thing that people are going to make videos and articles about? No. But, as a PC gamer who knows what it's like to upgrade my graphics card, from, uh, you know, a low-end one to a mid-range one and then up to a high-end one. Yeah, turns out with a pretty average library of games and no humongous blockbusters, upgrading my hardware can give me a better experience. So if somebody knows they're not particularly interested in Team Sony, I think there still is going to be a market there for the new console. I guess at the end of the day, it's a question of how many Xbox console gamers are interested in a more premium experience. Will those people have moved over to PC or is it truly the case where they want both that premium experience and the convenience of a console? So who knows? Maybe the Xbox Series X is going to be a fantastic purchase, but it's just a question of how many people will be a great purchase for. Hard to tell. Of course, uh, I'll try to get one on release day. Same for all of this stuff, so we can, you know, review them and let you know what's up. That's it for today's video. Bit of a discussion of Microsoft's strategy. Let me know uh, what do you think. Which team are you leaning uh, in, in this current lineup? Are you just like me, in the middle being like, I am on PC, I shall get all of these Microsoft games, and maybe Sony will give me some too, which is a decently happy position. That's it for me, thank you for watching today's video, and I will see you next time.